you haven't been a part of the Fitness Challenge, we start Saturday, January 9th at 10 a.m. Right? Yep. at the Community Development Recreation. One of the things that's important in that process, obviously, is nutrition. And we've had a number of people along the way who helped us teach better nutrition. It's a key factor in maintaining a healthy life. And I've known about Mary Flynn for probably 10 years. When, uh, I first knew of her when her book came out, uh, and she'll probably mention that a little bit here tonight, but uh, it attracted me because of the title, Low Fat Lies. Uh, and, and she'll explain what that's about uh, as she goes on. But uh, um, I thought, well, here we have a, a national expert 15 minutes away. I've got to, I've got to get you to come here. So, Tried last year, didn't work out, but uh, uh, she's here tonight, and I'm not going to talk anymore. I want you all to have a chance to hear her and uh, uh, learn what she has to offer. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I am uh, I'm a nutritionist. I'm a PhD in nutrition. I have uh, close to 35 years in the area. I just laugh when I say that every year, and it always seems like more and more time. Um, but I'm very interested in food. My area of expertise is how food is related to chronic disease development, which is different from talking about nutrients. And that's what um, Dave alluded to with the book that I co authored, Look at Lies. Uh, that came out in 1999, but it was the, the result of a number of years of me working in research. And starting in 1985, when low fat diets were really not that popular, and I, I was working in lipid metabolism then, in HDL and triglyceride work. And I knew that low-fat diets would actually worsen that situation. So when the government came out with all these recommendations to, uh, to lower fat, I, I, I just remember thinking, you know, and I mean, this is going back to 1986, 1987, thinking, what were they thinking? And my, my area then became focused on food and how food is what is important. So when you talk about fat, it depends on the food source. A ground beef is not good for you. Regardless of how you prepare it, not good for you. Olive oil is good for you. So olive oil is a pure fat, ground beef is a, it's a high source of fat, but they're, they're what we call fat foods, but they're totally different in their food, uh, their, their relationship to health. So I became very interested in that. I always joke with people, I say, because um, I, I'm 53, and so when I was going to college in 1974, I actually wanted to be a chef. And I remember my parents saying, oh, you have to get a degree, you have to go to college, you know. And that, that was fine, so I went as a plant science major. And I was a plant science major for two semesters, three semesters, before I took a course in nutrition. And I thought, this is what I want to do. And I was not a very good student, so it was actually kind of funny for my family when I went on to get a master's degree, PhD, do research. And I, I, you know, it's like kind of this, this thing my family always says, you were so glad you got out of college. You know? So we were glad that you were to do this. So when I came full cycle uh, about 10 years ago, was what I realized was, you can tell people all you want about food, but if you don't tell them how to translate it to a meal, it's lost. You know, they, they can't go home and do this. So I started putting recipes together, and I have a, a bunch of recipes, and I'll talk about some at the end, uh, some of the things I'm doing with it, but they're all very simple. I think that I, I call it cooking close to the earth. Uh, I, don't, I don't watch TV, which is kind of a joke, uh, because now I, have, I, I don't have any kids, but I have two nephews that are very close, so I just got this big flat screen TV for them to come to my house and watch TV, and it's like, I, I got it in July and I watched it once, and I keep thinking to myself, I'm just an hour watch a movie, that's the thing I'm going to do. But someone said to me, oh, you watch the food station, because you love food, and I'm thinking, that may be the one for me. But um, at any rate, I do, I do love food, and I, like to, I always have to say that in advance, because I know as, as a profession, dietitians, nutritionists, people think they're going to come to us and we're going to take away everything. And my, my message to people when I start is, I'm going to tell you what is the best case scenario for you to improve your health. That's my, that's my message. What is going to improve your health? And I say to them, it will taste good. It will be easy to do. It will be inexpensive. You, as the client, has to say, what will I do? What am I willing to give up? What won't I give up? You know, there's no food you have to totally never eat again. There's no food you have to always eat. But I'll say to patients, just try it. Can you, you know, I'm always amazed at uh, patients. Uh, my, my thing is, and I'll talk about olive oil, but when you cook vegetables into olive oil, they taste completely different. Uh, I, I've always said that we teach, we teach kids how to eat vegetables in the way that tastes the worst and is the least healthy. I'll get into the health aspects. But I'm always 
amazed when I get a patient that's, you know, over 40, never mind over 50 or 60, and they'll say, oh, I hate broccoli, I hate spinach. And I'll say, well, when did you, when did you last have it? And they say, oh, my mother used to make it. Who was your mother cooking the vegetables? I mean, this has to go back a long, long time. I don't think, you've never tried it again? I mean, all those years, you've never even thought to try it? So my, my, my message to patients always is, there are things you can try, there are things you can eat, okay? So my, my topic tonight was eating for the holidays, I'm going to talk about eating for the holidays. I'm going to talk about uh, some tips, things to do. Then I'm going to get into food, food as, as where we get healthy food, where we get healthy nutrients. I'm, I'm a person who believes that we eat three meals a day and we don't snack. Snacking came in when people started talking about low fat diets, advocating low fat diets. Because if you eat a low fat breakfast, a low fat lunch, and a low fat dinner, you're going to be hungry in between. So if you're eating low fat breakfast at say eight, you know at 10, you can have another little snack, then you have a lunch at 12, then at 2, you have another little snack, you're okay. But if you're eating a low fat, you can't get meal to meal. So, a couple of things happen with snacking. One is what we call erratic eating. Just like all of a sudden, in the middle of 3 o'clock in the afternoon, you have you know, a snack of 200 or 300 calories. Or you do like, you know, you don't have breakfast, and then you have breakfast the next day, lunch one day, lunch another day. That leads to over fat storage. Now, why it does, it has, some, it has to do with how we metabolize food, but it is not a good thing to do. The best case scenario is breakfast, lunch, dinner, within a window. Like, you eat your breakfast within a certain time every day, your lunch within a certain time every day, for the most part. You know, you think 30 days in a month. If 25 of those you're eating as you should, that's a good thing, okay? But then, if you don't eat that way, because most Americans don't. They'll say, well, I didn't get lunch today, you know, it was too, it was too busy, and so I'm going to eat a late snack, and that's the get you The other thing is, the smaller the amount of food that you eat at one time, like a small snack, the more efficient we are at trapping those calories. So I always say to my students, ironically, um, I teach undergraduate nutrition at Brown, and ironically, the energy metabolism lands right this week, right before Thanksgiving. You know, everyone celebrates Thanksgiving. It doesn't matter what the background is. And I'll say to them, it isn't the Thanksgiving meal that sets off the holiday. The Thanksgiving meal, you know, people, you hear those things that people eat, you know, 5,000 calories, 10,000 calories, and they may. But if the, the more food you eat in a meal, the less efficient your body is at tracking those calories. Meaning that if you were to eat, uh, hypothetically, we we'll say 1,500 calories in a day, okay, like a typical woman. If you were to eat three meals at 500 calories, or 15 meals at 100 calories, when you eat 100 calories at a time, your body basically can track all those 100 calories. If you're eating three meals at 500, it tracks far less. So this is this, it's like a theoretical thing, and it'd be hard to actually test because you'd have to have people eating the same way at a time. But it has to do with how we metabolize food. If your body has too much food at once, it wastes the energy as heat. And so that's why when you eat, when it's cold out, you eat, regardless of what it is, you get warm. Because your body's giving off heat. And so I, I always say to my students, it's like this little game I was thinking, most, hopefully they play when they go home. I'll say that we, we, are, we are really genetically divided into two types. One type is when we are overfed, we become very active. Those are the people after the holiday meal, they can't sit still. They gotta put the table, they gotta put the shirt off, they gotta put this, they gotta, they just like, they get very hungry. And the other half falls asleep. They get warm and fall asleep. And I say, what of the relatives go in and lay down and fall asleep? Those are the people that more efficiently store fat. They are genetically more efficient. And I'll say, but if you have that knowledge, you can do things like, you know, my mother used to always say, why don't we take a walk? Why don't we take a walk after, you know, the holiday meal while we're waiting for the relatives for dessert? It's like, okay, mom, we'll, we'll take a walk. But my mother, and thankfully I never heard my mother's genes, um, we can't sit still while we're with it. I mean, I get very, I'm, I'm fidgety anyway, but that we get very fidgety when, you know, we're overfed. And so, but that's a good thing. That is a good thing. What the problem with Thanksgiving is, if you eat the whole Thanksgiving meal, and then for the afternoon, you eat all desserts, and then the next day, you start again with all desserts. And my patients with that I've worked with the weight control this time of year, I'll say to them, if you eat Thanksgiving dinner, and then you can have dessert, because dessert is part of Thanksgiving. So the next day you wake up, assess, are you really hungry? How long till you get hungry? Could you go out for a course of walk in the morning? Could you do exercise? Could you do something more to get yourself off thinking, you know, this